Okay, let's turn off the executive role and let's talk about some geek stuff. Um, okay, uh, today I will present uh, a project. Uh, really, uh, I presented it for the first time two years ago in San Francisco in our annual workshop. Uh, tag low interaction on the client and uh, this presentation will be brief because basically tomorrow there's a demo about tag so if you're interested in tag please feel free to join tomorrow there will be three sessions starting from 2 a.m. and ending at 3 uh, 2 p.m. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's the agenda of today. First of all, a, a brief introduction about uh, uh, why we need only client technologies in the first place. Then we dive into TAG and we see details about TAGs and then some conclusions. Okay, let's start talking about client-side attacks. The number of client-side attacks has grown significantly in the past few years. And the attacks are shifting focus on a poorly protected vulnerable clients. Uh, if you think, for example, about you know, like drive-by downloads, you can easily realize that we are moving uh, to uh, attack uh, vulnerable clients. And in the last years, we are seeing more and more attacks against these systems. In particular, when I talk about client system, I'm uh, mainly referring to browsers because they are the system which are deployed on every hand user machine. And a lot of vulnerabilities are identified daily and reported uh, both in the browser and in the plugin they use. For example, if you think about uh, Adobe Acrobat plugin or Flash plugins or Java plugins, something like that. Uh, just like uh, um, the most uh, uh, known Onipot technologies, the, what we could refer to as a, a server Onipot, um, like for example the old Nepenthes or the new generation Dionia, uh, we need some instruments and tools in order to analyze these client-side attacks. And so uh, the only clients could be considered as a complement to the Onipots uh, uh, because there are tools designed to mimic the behavior of a user driven uh, network client application. When I talk about client, uh, please feel free to substitute this word with web browser, basically. And in order to analyze uh, how, um, how the client could be uh, exploited by an attacker's content. What we need, so, is something which seems uh, like a real browser, the same way as a classical server on it, seems like a real vulnerable system. And there's a question, uh, which is the best approach, the better approach between a real system, so an eye interaction on the client, or uh, an emulated one, so a low interaction one. Uh, basically, uh, I, I will not spend uh, too many words on the subject, uh, basically because I'm a little bit biased, so I think that the low interaction approach is better, but that's okay. And uh, uh, basically, a real system, uh, you are basically talking about uh, a virtual machine which is instrumented in order to analyze what is happening within uh, the virtual machine. So uh, having a look at uh, what happens in terms of uh, uh, file modification, the file system register modification or something like that. An emulated, uh, so basically we are talking about a real system which are properly instrumented in order to analyze the attack scenario. Um, an emulated one is, uh, uh, when, when you talk about low interaction on the client, we are talking about uh, uh, a system which is completely emulated. So uh, we'll see later that TAG emulates completely a browser, different browser personalities in order to hollow you to understand what is going on while you surf a web page, which could be potentially malicious. Okay, there are a uh, few things I want to talk to you about. Uh, um, basically, I will not able, I will not be able to, to cover all the things which uh, um, which are needed in order to build a, a low interaction on the client because it, there's a lot of stuff in here. But I would like to highlight the most important points. First of all, the document object model, the DOM. Uh, the DOM, uh, you can read the, um, the, the definition by W3C. Uh, the DOM is a platform and language neutral interface which allows the programs and script to dynamically access and update the content, structure, and style of documents. Basically, uh, when you, you think about some kind of dynamic pages uh, which you can interact, for example, with JavaScript or, or some kind of other client-side language, you're talking about languages which interact with the DOM, and so they are able to modify the DOM tree. 
Uh, I will not spend a lot of words about it because uh, there will be a lot to say and we have no time for doing it. Uh, but uh, basically, uh, I started working on low interaction on a client, working on another project by Osana Zario, which was Phone C. And while working on that project, we realized that uh, the most effective way to uh, analyze exploit kits uh, was to have a properly implemented DOM and not to chase exploit writers adding hacks to the code as soon as a new exploit kit came out. So I started, uh, I started implementing a DOM on my own, uh, and the tag DOM is almost compliant with the W3C Dunker, HTML, events, and view specification, level one, two, and partially three. And it is partially compliant with DOM style specification. It was designed as if my real requirement was uh, building a browser. So um, a lot of, uh, um, b basically I implemented all the interface, uh, all the, 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 the uh, IDL, so the, the API, um, and uh, some of these API are just placeholders right now because they are simply not needed. Uh, but they are there, so uh, basically the, uh, the interface is properly implemented. And this guarantees me the possibility to extend, uh, to extend the DOM uh, as soon as it's needed. Drive button load attacks uh, usually target specific version of the browser. So if you're thinking about uh, uh, starting a new low interaction on a client project, you should be aware that uh, your only client should be able to emulate different browser personalities because if you surf uh, an exploit kit page with one user agent, usually you will be served some kind of contents. If you surf the same web page with another user agent, uh, it's not just a matter of user agent, but uh, uh, we are talking about for, uh, browser personalities, you will be served a totally different content usually. So basically, if you want to have a, a complete uh, vision of what is going on, your honey client should be able to support different browser personalities. Supporting different browser personalities is always a matter of implementing different DOM behaviors and interfaces. Sometimes it's really, it's really hard. Uh, if we think, for example, about Internet Explorer, Internet Explorer changed everything passing from version 7 to version 8. Uh, a lot of interfaces were um, Microsoft interfaces before IE8. Uh, and then uh, they were standardized uh, with the uh, Internet Explorer 8. If you think, for example, DOM events, DOM events is one of these uh, examples. And basically, these are the uh, browser personalities which are currently supported by TUG. So uh, you can see that there are a lot of browsers which are emulated on different platforms. These are the Windows personalities. And these are other personalities, so Mac OS, Linux, and even some mobile personalities. These mobile personalities are turned to be quite interesting in the last days because we are currently seeing some exploit kits which start to be Android apps. Then uh, the DOM event handling. Uh, DOM event specification constitutes the most difficult one to emulate. Um, because there are huge differences in how the browser handles the events. Uh, in particular, there are some, for example, uh, in the last version of uh, Internet Explorer before it, uh, there were completely different API with completely different behavior. And so uh, in order to properly emulate uh, all this uh, uh, specification, you have to do a lot of work, a lot of design work behind it. Tag currently emulate the different behaviors of the supported browser, emulating two events by default, which are the load event and the mouse move event, and allowing to emulate all the other one if needed. There's just one switch, I will show you tomorrow during the demo. There's just one switch, uh, one uh, common line option uh, that allows you to uh, turn on the emulation of all the other events. You can ask yourself why I emulate mouse move by default, because a couple of years ago, something like that, uh, there was an exploit kit uh, which tried to detect uh, if uh, uh, it was serving a page to a real user or to an automatic system for, uh, for analysis. And basically, uh, the mouse move event is fired when the user moves the mouse on the, on the screen, on the, the window. 
And so basically, if the event is not fired, uh, basically uh, you are talking maybe with a, a, an uh, automatic analysis uh, uh, systems. And so they were not serving any content. Uh, for this reason, mouse move is always emulated by default. Load, the load event should always emulate it by default because uh, there are a lot of stuff which do not work if you do not emulate it. Uh, talking about the DOM, there, is, um, there are even uh, some hooks which are useful for analyzing well-known exploit. And uh, uh, I will show you an example of an hook which is used for analyzing a Java exploit, uh, the Java exploit with security prompt warning bypass. This is the CV uh, for your reference. And basically, uh, you can see that um, everything is emulated in this handler, and this is used, the last line here, uh, the last try, um, is used in order to fetch, uh, in order to fetch the, the malicious jar uh, for, for later analysis. Uh, just a bit of news, uh, uh, I'm currently working on integrating a Java sandbox with MTAC, so basically I think that in a month's time, this jar could be uh, analyzed as well, not only fetched. Uh, I uh, integrated even PDF in order to analyze malicious PDFs and Android in order to analyze uh, Android applications, and this would be uh, the last step, and then I think that uh, the version 0 0.5 will be released. Uh, talking about JavaScript, I use uh, uh, Google Wait JavaScript engine uh, wrapped to Pi V8, and it is used for uh, static analysis to abstract syntax tree generation and inspection, and uh, for dynamic analysis, uh, which is mainly used. Um, we'll see later. Be basically, mm, we have two two kind of analysis: uh, static one and dynamic one. The static one is uh, uh, done through the AST, and Pi Eight allows you to build a really um, in a really simple and effective way the AST, which could be analyzed in order to to check for static signatures. For example, uh, and a really effective static signature is uh, looking at the length of the string which is passed to the JavaScript eval functions. Um, this is the trick which is used uh, uh, sometimes in order to uh, to serve um, to serve an exploit. And then there is the dynamic analysis, uh, which is uh, performed to the V8 debugger protocol and to Libemu integration. This dynamic analysis allows you to uh, detect and emulate the shellcode. And tomorrow we'll see an example about uh, detection and emulation of shellcode, which is done to Libemu and PyLibemu, which is a, a, a wrapper around it. Uh, Okay, I already talked about static signatures, and static analysis is always is, uh, uh, also used in order to identify interesting breakpoint for later dynamic analysis. The basic concept is really simple. Uh, you uh, analyze statically the code, and uh, let's talk about a, a real-world example. Uh, if you talk about an exploit which uh, um, uses the if spray detection, you have to you have to allocate a lot of uh, heap memory and fill it with with content in order to uh, to jump later within that uh, memory area and in particular during the static analysis uh, i identified uh, interesting points where it could happen for example uh, if we in order to 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 spray the heap in the usually uh, some tricks are used for example for loops while loops uh, using array filling them or something like that if you identify statically all these points you are able to um, to uh, insert breakpoints just in the points you really need because after the loop you will inspect the JavaScript contents and search for shell code within that area of memory and uh, basically detect and potentially emulate the shell code which is there. Uh, we are short in time, so. Um, Tug is, um, uses the same concept as Phony C as regard to uh, vulnerability modules. So we have Python based vulnerability modules. And uh, for example, uh, uh, Hectrix control, curb browser functionalities, and browser plugins are all emulated. Uh, by Python vulnerability modules. Talking about ActiveX, Tug implements an ActiveX layer of its own uh, for emulating ActiveX control, and obviously this is used just for Explorer uh, personalities. 
uh, makes use of multi modules in order to uh, emulate these ActiveX controls. Uh, not all the not all the interfaces, just the one you know that contains some kind of vulnerability. But uh, uh, again, uh, it is really uh, simple to extend uh, to extend uh, uh, these uh, vulnerability modules. And uh, the layer was designed in order to allow you to, to extend them in a fast and easy way. Another thing you need and you must implement if you are properly designing a low interaction on the client is to emulate different browser plugin version. Because uh, we talked about that, we, we said that uh, exploit kits serve different content uh, depending on the, which version of the browser you are surfing. Uh, the same thing is true for uh, all the browser plugins. So for Adobe PDF, Shockwave Flash, Java plugin. And tag allows to change you the mm, version of this browser plugin to simple switches, as you can see. Uh, these are details about lagging, the, the lagging format, but this is just a list, so I will skip this, uh, this slide. And these are examples of lagging. This, for example, comes from an analysis, an old analysis of a black hole uh, exploit kit. Uh, this is uh, in, um, a snippet taken from the JSON output. Uh, here you can see that there are even uh, exploit graph which are useful to understand. Uh, in this case, it's not so useful, but it's useful, for example, if there are huge redirection chains in order to understand what is going on. And so uh, to, to understand, to have the, the big picture of what went on during the analysis. Uh, other examples of logging. And the last thing is uh, uh, about classifiers. Uh, uh, time? Yeah, okay. Uh, the classifiers. Uh, classifiers is uh, one of the less feature which I had to tag. And currently, two types of classifier exist. The URL classifier, which works simple on a URL pattern matching. Uh, as you can see, um, it is based on Yara. And uh, um, because the URL has, um, it happens quite often that they uh, have always the same structure for long times. So you can, you can match based on the URL structure uh, if this URL is about a particular exploit kit. And then the most interesting one is the JavaScript classifier because uh, uh, Tag executes this code, uh, even emulating it. Uh, so uh, the JavaScript engine is really executing the, the, the code. So basically, if, uh, even if the code is uh, uh, highly obfuscated and you go to uh, end layer of the obfuscation, you will tend to have at the last stage the, the code in clear text as you would see if, if it's not obfuscated. And so, Working this way, you can apply ER rules to all these stages of the obfuscation, and at the last stage, you will be able to extract information about JavaScript uh, f from the JavaScript code, and so potentially identify the exploit kit. This is the rule used for identify plugin detect, which is uh, used by a lot of exploit kit in order to detect the version of the browser and uh, uh, other things like the, the browser plugin version or something like that. The source code is publicly available at this URL and uh, always contribution, comments and feedback are welcome. So feel free to send me an email if you want a new feature or uh, if you uh, would like that uh, some new things, uh, feel free to, uh, to send me emails. Thanks for your attention. If there are any questions, we have no time. And uh, <laughs> If there are any questions, take a screenshot and email Angelo. Okay, thank you very much for the attention. Thank you.